Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. Welcome back. Day three of the 6-5 Summit. Boy, this has been a great couple days here, and I am just excited as heck to talk about uh, a topic that's important to investors, important to companies, and important to employees, employ important to society as a whole, and, and that's uh, what's going on uh, with sustainability. And uh, as you know, the theme is you know navigating troubled waters through practical innovation. And as Dan and I have said on, on the pod before, we really believe we're in a stage where we're getting to more, I'll call it practical sustainability. Uh, with that said, I am really excited to welcome Sarisa to the show. How are you? Great, great. Thank you, Pat. Love to be here. Yeah, it's been great getting to know you over the last couple of years in multiple companies. And here we are in New York City uh, at Ericsson's, uh, maybe we'll call it East Coast uh, uh, HQ here. But it's great to see you. Great to see you too. And see you in the office with the best view for sure. No, I know. <laughs> we got the Empire State Building and I guess Park Avenue. But anyways, it's beautiful down here. Um, I wanted to ask you, so I I gave the six five point of view on this era that we're getting of practical sustainability, kind of moving from a, hey, you know, it feels good, this is a good thing to do for the environment. Uh, I know by the way it's good for business to, you know, this is good for business uh, and isn't this a good thing to do? Are you seeing the same sentiment type of shift that we are? Absolutely, 100%. I mean, I think over the last few years, we saw a lot of um, sustainability in corporate visions, um, or they were taking sustainability goals, whether they I'll, might have I'll been- I'll say it, greenwashing. Right, right, <laughs> possibly. Um, there may not have been scientific goal uh, measures attached to those. It's really shifted now. Um, you're seeing it really integrated into ways of working. It's a business imperative. It's part of the operational, uh, you know, uh, strategy, operations, and vision, not yeah. just vision. Um, so, no, it's really shifted gears. Um, and of course, it makes sense. Energy is becoming more and more expensive. Right. Um, it is, like you said, important to consumers and investors, but it, it's huge on the bottom line. If you look at our industry, about 30% of OPEX is energy in That's running incredible. networks, which is I had no huge, idea. Yeah. right? Yeah. And in the US, it's at least 20%. So anything that can impact that is a massive business gain, right? right. As well as good for your customers. Yeah, one thing I've found is we can all agree with, right? Because uh, I think my thesis on it is you have to find elements of agreement, work on them together, and, and move forward. Um, but even your, some of your largest customers and some of the largest carriers have commitments mm -hmm. as well. And you being a huge provider, whether it's equipment, software to make that, that work, that makes it very important for you as well. What, what are some of those commitments that you're seeing and in, in, that carriers have made? Yeah, we're seeing really strong commitments, um, you know, for uh, achieving net zero, uh, 10 to 15 year timelines where they're really looking to fully impact. So they've taken science-based commitments. Um, they are also supporting that within the ecosystem that we're doing proper measurements uh, and so on. But with this kind of expense on it, there's a big challenge for us, right? And, and it's not, a, it's not a, a simple or direct view of things, yeah. Yeah, it's not. In fact, uh, providing uh, uh, the equipment, the software, and the services to a lot of carriers out there, there's a lot of variables, right? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're connecting to a multitude of devices. It's not just smartphones, right? It can also uh, be industrial IoT devices, consumer uh, IOT devices, and then the data has to go the other way, which is uh, to the hyperscaler providers, to you know the, the L3s of the world, to get basically get on the internet itself. Mm -hmm. uh, what are, from, from your point of view, what, are, what, what makes that unique? I mean, what do those variables mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I think there are a unique set of challenges um, overall, um, and in basic, Terms, we have a service that is uh, critical infrastructure, right? Oh yes, I, I, I glossed over that by the way. It actually <laughs> right. has to work and it, it doesn't. It has to work yeah. really, really well. Um, it's critical infrastructure. It is highly distributed, as you were saying. Not only different devices, but if you look at it, it's 
tens of thousands of cell sites. So right. highly distributed. And guess what? It's got an insatiable demand going on it yeah. for growth. So it's a, a very you know detailed set of complex variables that we have to address all of them. Um, and we have to take a much more holistic approach um, to redefine that. We also, interestingly enough, have to change some other things. There's other challenges intrinsic yeah. to our business, um, like the KPIs. How do you measure you know, the performance of a network? What is best network? Well, we're not in the days of can you hear me now, right? right? We're, it, it, we need to change those and have a more holistic view that looks at the wanted performance and the energy consumption and, and balances that. And you know, for us, we're really looking at how do you redefine what is the yeah. best network and its performance and energy consumption. I mean, we very well could see in the future where best network, it looks very different, probably in the next, at least the next five years uh, on the definition as these pressures, particularly around uh, energy, and then the capabilities that we have from uh, machine learning and generative AI. It's been a, a great, great time with uh, um, your CEO here, uh, in fact, uh, talking about a, a lot of these future types of technologies. So uh, let's get back to a little bit, How? what is your approach mm. uh, to sustainability uh, at, the, at the company? And maybe even talk about some things uh, that, that might be unique and different to address those unique needs or maybe different from other people right. in the category? Well, I'll set a little context uh, to talk about our approach. Um, when you look at um, you know 4G to 5G, there's a couple of things. One, you've had like a 300x increase in demand. And you know when you look at Ericsson products and you think about our approach, 93% of our emissions are from what from our, our products, from our customers' usage of our products. Right. So where we can impact is is there. And then finally, we talked about how much energy they, they use. Well, 75% of the network energy goes on the RAN, the radio access network. That's on us. That's the real uh, energy sucker, right? It, yeah, it's the energy yeah. hub, let's be honest. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so we've, we've got to solve for that. Um, and we have a holistic approach. We look at you know sustainability in the evolution of the network and network planning from day one. We look at the modernization and expansion of the network, really the hardware, the new radios, and so on. And thirdly, intelligent automation. And this is rarely where we bring in the AI, the ML, and the automation right. to change the, the metrics on this. Well, the great part is you're actually using in, in earlier in the week we interviewed Nicholas and he did talk about hey we're already using machine learning and we've been working on generative AI for the past three years it seems like the predictive nature of AI right and, and you know generative AI assuming is better than ML which is better than let's say analytics based AI uh, it would seem that, that prediction in the future uh, would be one of the, the these these important things. But uh, what does matter is the here and now. The, the the challenge is you have to plan so many years in advance. Okay, if I look at the amount of uh, years it takes to even get um, a G out, let's just let's say ten years, uh, and with five G, it's Again, my definition, maybe not yours, it's more than a G, okay? <laughs> it's it's extensive, it's a, just a yes. radically different uh, way of network. It must take a lot of lead time to be able to plan for this. Right, but we took these goals a long time ago. Yeah. This is not new. Um, yeah, you know. I forget, and, and quite frankly, you know, Sweden is a leader in all of this, always has been. Uh, I remember 30 years ago uh, in, a, in a prior job where kind of leading in uh, employee safety uh, of equipment that, it, that quite frankly permeated the entire globe. So this is not something that's new no. for uh, new for Ericsson either. Not new, and also if we looked at our future and we said, you know, that insatiable demand for traffic, if we, right. the energy curve followed that, it would be impossible. And so, you know, in fact, with our 5G solutions, 
although we've seen a 300x increase in data, we've only seen a 1.6x increase in power usage. 2022, we delivered a radio portfolio of 5G solutions that were 10x more efficient. So yes, we've been working on this yeah. for years. But yes, and then you also have a lot more pieces to the solution in driving intelligence. You can have huge impact with the radio uh, itself. Obviously, if you can replace three radios with one, multi-band and so on, huge and you know passive cooling, all of the different pieces of it. But then also, when you look at AI and ML being predictive on traffic, when you can turn resources on and off, it's yeah. like you know you're not going to keep the lights on in the basement when everybody's upstairs. Exactly, and that you know I love the analogy because that's exactly uh, where at least when we talk to you, that's that that's where you're headed. So, can you talk about some real world deployments uh, uh, in action? You talked about the equipment. Uh, you know, there's a 10x spectral efficiency that, that came inherently. And sometimes we and gloss energy over energy efficiency, that. Yeah, yeah, that's huge though, right? Yeah. I mean, we say it so easily I know, now, I but. Know. <laughs> but a 10x, I mean, that is an or, literally an order of magnitude. More efficient. Improvement yes, uh, here, I don't want to gloss over that. But how have some of the carriers, some of the MNOs, right. any specific examples you can share with the audience? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, Yes, m hardware modernization, because of all the effort that's gone into that, has the biggest impact. So for example, Vodafone, with their site modernization, they got 43% improvement in energy consumption. Right. So absolutely huge. You know, and a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, but 5G's built out. Well, no, it's not in most of the world, and it's only halfway there, so there's a lot still to be modernized, but there's also low-hanging fruit in, in terms of software optimization. Um, you know, we worked with Rogers and deployed sleep mode software to optimize that. They have now got 25 gigahertz hour savings oh my gosh. Uh, per year. So yeah. 2,000 homes could be powered by that every <laughs> single year, by that software deployment. But for me, the really interesting, exciting stuff is yeah. the AI and ML deployment. Yeah. And you know, this is where you know we've got such complex networks with thousands of sites, and you know, we just did a trial with Fire East Tone in Taiwan. AI and ML optimization deployed got 25 percent savings in energy consumption with zero impact on KPIs. That to me is just yeah. And by the way, all these numbers that you're giving on raw power savings isn't even factoring in the massive increase in amount of data that's going right. through here. Right, yes. Right, and that's yes. that, that that's one of the things that I Do think is. Do more with less. Exactly, <laughs> that, that I, I think is, is most uh, uh, impressive here. Yeah. So, uh, let me ask you this, D does, does ORAN versus RAN figure uh, in this at all? It would seem to me that, and this is, by the way, this is true in any type of more open, typically open is, is less efficient, okay? Because it's less optimized. And I'm curious, how does that factor in with RAN, today's RAN versus ORAN? It would seem like it'd be a lot harder with ORAN to pull this off. Well, I'll say something right up front. ORAN or purpose-built, yes. we have the most efficient portfolio, the most efficient solutions in the world, period. Yeah. Just flat out. Um, not only it. by us, but by third party <laughs> right. assessment yeah. as well. Yeah. So regardless of whether you're talking purpose-built or ORAN. Um, secondly, obviously we've invested very heavily in our ASICs and lots of optimization, and yes. that's a huge uh, area of leadership in R&D for us. But that said, you know, we're also yeah. working deeply with our partners in Cloud Run, with Intel and AMD, right? Yeah. And doing intelligence with, with them so that we can turn on and off cores and resources as we need them. And we've just delivered two, um, I would say our apps, but we'll probably put it in English, but two sustainability automation applications for the RAN that works not only for purpose-built, but for ORAN too, to deliver those same kinds of AI and ML gains in sustainability for ORAN or for purpose-built. So, you know, we're, we're investing across the board. Yeah, and both of our backgrounds, we spent a little bit of time at chip companies yeah. and if there's one thing that's, that's just been true forever, is there is this sliding scale with general compute versus, let's say, ASIC, right? In fact, they're on, you know, they're they're essentially on opposite spectrums. And 
uh, the more efficient comes with ASIC, the less efficient and a little bit easier to program uh, comes on general purpose. And I know that that factors uh, 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 in here, but I do know that we will find a happy medium. I don't think in the spirit of, uh, you know, quote unquote, more openness, uh, we're gonna go in a direction that's less efficient. Right? Yeah, we're gonna have absolutely. to find a way uh, to get there, and it's great to see, yeah. right, the numbers that are coming out from Ericsson. It says, hey, regardless of which way you go, uh, we're still the most efficient. I yeah. love that. And, this is and great. we'll keep delivering solutions for right. this. Right. So, so um, I wanted to, to wrap up here, look a little bit, and talk about um, there's a multiplying effect that happens when you get more efficient and sustainable. And can you talk a little bit about? Uh, how you're looking at the overall economics of it, the impact to society as we move forward based upon what Ericsson is doing, uh, not only on its own, but, but broadly as, uh -huh. a, as a company. Right, so I think you know we are part of that larger ICT industry, uh, which consumes 1.4%, I think has 1.4% of global emissions, um, but it's being viewed as the, and I, I think we certainly view it, as a way to make other industries more sustainable. It's, you know, it's assumed by the industry we could get a 15% impact on emissions. We invest in that with our smart factory ourselves. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah, so I mean, we're doing our part in that all of this intelligence has to be connected, the intelligent networks, and being able to run those applications and those automation features that will become a great, which will deliver great efficiencies, right? Um, whether that be with em, you know, embodied carbon in the products or whether it's actually the power to run it. So I think we have a big role to play there and we have a big role to play in not only our own targets, um, but also our customers' targets and delivering the solutions that will enable that. And like I said, redefine what a best network is. Yes, and it would seem logical to me also that uh, whether it's data coming in or data coming out, there are things that you and, and your network has to, networks have to connect to. And that would have an impact, meaning uh, when you turn off something uh, at a certain point, whatever that endpoint is needs to handshake and make that happen. And it seems logical to me that it would lose less use less power and then going into the internet as well would be the same yeah. thing. Where So uh, I see, ironically, a network effect of optimizing <laughs> network. And I do believe that uh, carriers in particular are gonna be making more decisions or they, they need to be making more future decisions based on uh, a more optimized and intelligent uh, network. Yeah, absolutely, and we have to use these new software and particularly AI solutions to make use of the data that insight we have across the whole network and tens of thousands of sites to optimize yeah. it down to the site level for every user there. You can't do that manually. Exactly. Right, and so really delivering those kinds of database solutions with a great deal more predictive elements in them will help yeah. us have that impact for them. Exciting stuff, Sarisa, great to see you again and welcome to the 6-5 Summit. Thank you for bringing your insights on not just what Ericsson is doing, but also the bigger effects of, of what the company is doing with its partners and impact on society as a whole. I really appreciate that. Well, thank you, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to share the story and share the conversation. Yeah, great to see you again. You too, cheers. So uh, this is Pat Moorhead uh, signing off here with this great conversation we're having with Erickson on sustainability. Uh, to, uh, stay tuned, more content coming for day three. And if you have the time, go back. It's on time delay. Check out day one, check out day two, check out day one interview with Nicholas Huveldop, uh, Erickson North American CEO. Take care wherever you are on the planet. Good night.